Hi, everybody. It's Julie Skolnick from with understandingcomescom.com. Let's talk to E and to E resources.com. Welcome to the gifted and distractible vlog. Today, I want to talk about emotion regulation, or maybe I should say emotion dysregulation. You know what? 100% of my clients, whether they are parents of two E kids or they're two E adults themselves, report emotion dysregulation as a challenge for themselves or their kids. And when do you ever get to say 100%? But it really is 100% because gifted is a range of responses to the environment that are otherwise atypical to the general population, right? We know about overexcitabilities. We talked about that in our last vlog about what is 2E. And so these overexcitabilities being this widened, heightened antenna, where in stimulation is either incredibly pleasurable or really painful, this sort of sets us up for emotion dysregulation or re responding to stimuli in a very big way. And because of the way gifted people show up in the world, whether it's at school, at home, in the clinician's office, at work, in a marriage, emotion regulation can be a challenge. I want you to picture this formula I'm going to describe for you. It's the Skolnick formula for emotion regulation. So think about gifted characteristics, intellectual interests, existential considerations, asynchronous development, perfectionism, overexcitabilities or intensities, right? That showing up in the world leads to anxiety, stress, frustration, misunderstanding, and the combination and the fact that everybody around you misunderstands sort of this sensitivity leads to challenging behavior, which is often seen as emotion dysregulation. What happens next? Reactions. Everybody around you, based on misunderstanding, based on assumptions, based on judgment, they, they misunderstand you and they react. The reaction, consequences, punishments, threats, bribery, whatever it is, those reactions lead to more of the anxiety, stress, frustration, and misunderstanding. And typically, where we intervene is at the reaction spot. That's where we're intervening. That's where we're addressing what's happening in front of us. Well, if you know about the rage bell curve, no teaching or changing of behavior is going to happen in the middle of tantruming, in the middle of breaking down, in the middle of closing off in that moment, in that rage bell curve, the teaching or modifications happen sort of anticipatorily setting us up for success or looking back and unpacking the situation together. So where should interventions happen? Before, we know, we know the giftedness characteristics. We know the intellectual interests and the rage to learn. We know the existential considerations and how emotionally that can affect our gifted and two-way learners and two-way selves and asynchronous development and perfectionism and super stimulatabilities or overexcitabilities. So we have to anticipate. And by the way, those of you who are loving a two-way child, teaching a two-way child, or if you are a 2E adult, you have to really regulate yourself before you can regulate those people who you are interacting with, who you love, who you are trying to teach. So first anticipate, then self-regulate, and then investigate. What actually is lying beneath that behavior? Is there something we can do about it? Behavior is communication. Let's not assume that the behavior means defiance. Let's not assume that the behavior is the child trying to get attention. Let's find out actually what underlies the emotion dysregulation so that we can really help this child solve their problem and learn lagging skills. Thanks for listening.